Hi, my name is Corey. I'm the LED wall specialist here at ADJ. Due to the many requests we received, we're here to bring you a series of videos to cover how to build and operate an LED wall. So we're gonna start off with one of the most, if not the most important part of flying an LED wall, your rigging. What I have here and what I've found to be the easiest when flying uh, LED walls, whether at trade shows or in-house, is GAC flex. This is a three foot GAC flex to a half ton shackle. Uh, and of course our AV2 model rigging bar. This is the front and the back side will be where your connecting points are. You can use a clamp to eye bolt shackle. Uh, of course, I find it a lot easier with the GAC flex being that you can easily maneuver around the diagonals that you find on most trust, as well as being able to distribute the weight of the wall dead center compared to after depending on the front or the back rung of the truss. What we're gonna be building today is a four by two LED wall. So what I've done already is found my center point of the truss and hung my first rigging bar. It's very key to find the center point of, your tr of the truss so that you're not off center once you get further into build. Um, as of right now, I only have one, so I'm gonna go ahead and move forward and build uh, the other two rigging bars, or three rigging bars, should I say, that are needed for this. Uh, as of course, you see the orientation right now, this is the front. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that around, so that way, as we build the wall, you can actually see the back of the panels instead of the front face LEDs. So it's a lot more important to see the connecting points than just the LED mask. Before we move on to building the wall, we wanna be sure that our rigging bars are properly joined and level and at the same height. We're gonna do that by connecting them on the backside plate and ensuring that they are at a level and flat surface. Depending on whether or not you're building a curved or a flat wall, uh, that's gonna determine its final resting point. But in our case, we're gonna build a flat wall, so we wanna be sure that they're properly butted up against one another. With that, you can see that they're both at the same height, and that's key before adding any weight to the wall so that you can make any adjustments with the rigging, whether it's a clamp or your GAC flex like here. Uh, if we were to have panels on here, it'd be a lot harder for us to adjust one or the other, uh, de depending on whether one side was pulling or the other side was pulling uh, on the GAC flex. Now that we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and add the left side rigging bar and the last right bit rigging bar needed, so we can go ahead and build our four by two wall. Now that we have all of our rigging bars set and at the same height, we're gonna go ahead and move forward with uh, hanging the actual panels themselves. Uh, we recommend that you do this with a partner, but in the case you're a one-man band, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that by yourself. Uh, since this is our AV2 model, you're going to want to make sure that you do flip back the rear corner protectors um, on both sides as well as top before you add that to the rigging bar because they will um, disturb the connection point. What you're going to want to do is you're going to go ahead and want to straddle the panel like so, so you can hold it from tilting forward or back. With that, you're going to go ahead and move forward to the rigging bar. There's an alignment pin that you can use. I like to just stick the actual plant clamp into it. You'll hear it click in like so. Go ahead and do the other side now. You can hear the click in and there your panel is securely connected to the rigging bar. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and connect it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take all the weight and go ahead and tighten it down on both sides. And now it's properly set. Once you do that, you're gonna go ahead and move forward with the second one and do the same. Again, flipping back the corner protectors. Getting a nice steady grip on the bottom so we can ensure that it doesn't slip out. Aligning with the rigging bar. There's one, and there's two. So now we're clicked in. We're gonna go ahead and tighten it down. So now that we have the both top sides locked in and tight, we're gonna go ahead and move into the side. Uh, for us, since we are doing a flat wall, we wanna be sure that we have both connectors set to 90 so that we don't have any angles uh, trying to go in a convex or concave matter. What I like to do is pl place my hand at the bottom where the two points join um, and go ahead and make sure that one side is not protruding across the other. They're nice and flush on the bottom here. Once they are, I go ahead and tighten it down. And then we'll do, go ahead and do the same for the top. We can use the rigging bars here for this case. And you can go ahead and tighten it down like so. And now you have your beginning two panels connected and started. Uh, you can place your hand on the bottom to ensure that they're both nice and flush, uh, which they are here. And now, if in the case that you had one sitting lower than the other, we might want to check our rigging system. Uh, but if we're good and we're nice and flush, you can go ahead and move forward and continue those same steps onto the next uh, panels that go on until you start to the next row. Now 
Now that the wall's complete, we're gonna move forward with wiring the system. If you notice when you're in the rear side of the panels, all your blue nitrate connectors are on the left-hand side of each panel. It's key to start on that side with both your power and your data, as it makes it a lot easier when dropping into your truss to have one single wiring, then have one starting point here and another ending point there. We're gonna run in a vertical fashion with our power and data jumper. So we're gonna go from top to bottom here. And that just makes it a lot easier with that three foot length of a cable that we have and not having to jump from one opposite side to the other uh, if you were to run in a horizontal fashion. Um, we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate that now by wiring the rest of the wall here to give you an example to, to build off of. And there you go, the wall is wired up. As you can see here, uh, we started with our top, our power in here. We went out, in, out to in, out to in. And when we did that, like I said, in a vertical fashion, up to down, all the way around. I know that's one of the key topics that we've seen a lot of was people receiving incorrect cabling lengths, whether it's a, a five foot or a three foot cable telling us that the cables do not reach from uh, horizontally. Um, the reason why would be if you noticed when you got to the top here, if we were to run horizontally, it would reach perfectly fine because you're going uh, out to in, out to in. Uh, but when you were to get here, you would be going in a out to in fashion, which would then leave you with an output here causing you not to reach your input over here. And that's something that you see regularly if you were to run it just horizontally across as far as your power goes, you are correct, the three foot is not gonna reach for you. Uh, so that's why we recommend running it in the vertical fashion because as you see here, it's gonna give you a nice and clean reach. Uh, there's not tension on there, they're nice and loose. And if you needed to here, you can always hide the cables up in the handles. Uh, it's a real simple, not a lot of cable length left over. And now you have a clear view underneath the panel uh, wall to not see any of the cables dangling down. So again, I'll go ahead and wire this back to the fashion that we said, which would be and there you go. And the good thing about this also is when running it vertically, it allows you for an opening at the top here for a redundancy cable if you were to run a redundancy, uh, which we also recommend and we'll get into a little bit later uh, on more on the software side of things. Uh, but here is the cleanest possible way you can run your wiring for your LED wall. All right, that's it for this one, guys. We have our wall wired and rigged. If you guys have any questions on that process, feel free to contact me or our ADJ team at the following emails. Uh, stay tuned for the next video when we move on to the Smart LCP software and configuring this wall. Uh, thanks for watching.